Welcome to How to Interpret Your Bible Class. My name is Spencer Conway, and I'm one of the pastors on staff here at Rock Church Halifax, and it's my hope that this would be a resource that would help you in your walk with Jesus and your study of the Bible. So we just wanted to say thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with all of the new content we're posting every week. But for now, we really hope that you enjoyed this teaching. All right, now we are going to talk about how to find the theological principle. Now, before we jump into the specifics, I want to do a quick review of the interpretive journey we've been going over the past couple of weeks. We have step one, which is grasping the text in their town. This is when we ask the key question, what does the text mean to the original audience? Step number two is when we measure the width of the river. We ask the question, what are the differences between the biblical audience and us? The third step, crossing the principalizing bridge. This is when we ask the question, what is the theological principle in this text? Step number four, consulting the biblical map. We ask the question, how does our theological principle fit with the rest of the Bible? And then finally, step number five, we're going to be talking about that in a couple of weeks, grasping the text in our town. This is when we ask the question, how should individual Christians live out the theological principles? So, whereas in the last couple of weeks, we've been really delving into the nitty-gritty of step number one, how to grasp the text in their town, the town of the biblical audience. We've been talking about historical context, cultural context. We've been talking about how to read sentences, paragraphs, discourses. There's all sorts of kind of nuts and bolts that we've been jumping into. Today, we're going to be jumping into this question of how to find the theological principle. And this is a really important part in the journey. In fact, I would argue it, it qu- could very well be the most important part, though all of the steps are obviously important. Now, here's an important thing to mention. Obviously, we lay out the interpretive framework. There's a five steps, and it kind of gives you this impression that you're going to need to go about these steps in sort of like a sequential order, like step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. And while that is helpful, the truth is after you've gone through the first step, steps two, three, and four are closely interrelated and need to happen somewhat concurrently. You're going to kind of start as you go from two, three, to four, you're going to start to kind of jump between the three. And the reason is because all of them are, are crucial parts of this journey of finding the theological principle which is going to act as the bridge that helps takes us from the town of the biblical audience into our own town today. So let's talk about how to find the theological principle. First things first. When we try to find the theological principle, we need to understand the relationship between universal theological truths and context-specific theological truths. Let's talk about context-specific theological truths first. So, context-specific theological truths are based on the universal theological truth, yet it's more narrowly focused into a specific setting. And when it comes to this idea of context-specific theological truths, really in step number one and step number two, these are the steps where we're really beginning to interact with the context-specific theological truths. You do all of your observation, all of your analysis in step number one of the passage that you're studying. You write your summary sentence describing what it is that is happening in that text. And then as you come into step two and you start looking at the differences and the similarities, it all has to do with this context-specific theological truth. We deal with this in steps one and in steps two. In step one, like I said, we're observing the text and summarizing what we see taking place in the specific context. And then in step two, we identify how far from the context-specific theological truth we need to move. We do this by identifying the differences and similarities between their context and our own. And so, for example, like Leviticus 11, this is a passage in the Torah where God is speaking to Moses and Aaron and he's giving these laws to the Israelite, these holiness codes about what you can eat and what you can't eat. You can eat the things that are clean and you, you want to stay away from the things that are unclean. This is a context-specific theological truth that is being revealed in a specific setting at this point on Mount Sinai in, 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 the, in the wilderness to the people of Israel, right? Right? So let's look at some of the differences, for example, in step number two. We're not Israelites. We're not under the old covenant. But then there's some similarities. We're still God's people today. God is still holy. God still demands holiness from his people. And we still 
enjoy his presence. And so, with the differences from step two in mind, in step three, we seek to identify the more universal theological truth that lies behind the context-specific truth of step one. So, again, referencing Leviticus 11 and the food laws, you see these context-specific theological truths for the people of Israel in that time, in that place, the, the, the laws about the, the clean and the unclean food that are being given from God through Moses and Aaron to the people of Israel. Step three is all about studying that passage and trying to figure out what is the universal principle that's applicable to all people in all places, regardless, regardless of context, what is that theological principle. And so as we are on this journey of trying to identify that principle. Number two, this is a really important point to keep in mind when it comes to finding the theological principle. We want to identify the purpose. So as we identify the meaning for the biblical audience in step one, and as we look at the differences and the similarities between them and us in step two, we want to ask this question, why? Why? What is the purpose of the truth that we've kind of found in steps one and two. And I think that this is a great diagram that kind of demonstrates the relationship between the context-specific theological truths and the universal. And so we've been talking about a context-specific theological truth in Leviticus 11. Holiness involves avoiding unclean food. You can get even very specific for the people of Israel. Don't eat pork. So that's the context-specific truth. But when we ask the question why, why, what is the purpose behind this uh, theological principle for the people of Israel, we kind of move up into a more general area and we see that in the Old Testament law, God instructs the Israelites that all aspects of life must be lived in terms of separation, i.e. the clean and the unclean, so that they will always be conscious of God's holy present. There's a key, the holiness of God. This even includes what they eat. So right then and there we see a key. There is a universal theological truth being indicated right here. God's holiness, the fact that God is holy. You move up into even more of a general area. It says in the Old Testament, holiness involves separating righteousness from sinfulness, clean from unclean. And then all the way up here, we have the universal theological truth that God is holy and he wants his people to be holy. And we won't go into the way that that gets specific in the New Testament, but we see that even within the New Testament, the specific theological truth starts to flesh out and express itself in a little bit of a different way. Here's a third thing that you're going to want to do. You're going to want to identify the purpose as number two, but number three, once you've found your theological principle, in this case, God is holy, you're going to want to filter your theological principle. We want to remind you of the criteria that we gave you in earlier lessons for determining whether principles are valid or not. These, this criteria is very much still valid. So here is some of the criteria that you're going to want to kind of filter your theological principle through. First, the theological, uh, the theological principle should be reflected in the text. It should be timeless and not tied to a specific situation. It should not be culturally bound. It should be relevant to both the biblical audience and the contemporary audience. And last but not least, it should correspond to the teaching of the rest of Scripture. And really, this point right here is point number four in the interpretive journey, consulting the biblical map, making sure that you kind of enter into the parts whole spiral where you reflect with your specific theological principle and make sure it's not contradicting any other areas of Scripture. Are are there any other parts in the Bible that clearly refute this theological principle that you've come up with? Here's some additional guidelines. Be sure to identify where this passage fits uh, within the large overarching story of the Bible. This ultimately is going to help with identifying similarities and differences in step number two. And hey, that is all we got for this part on how to find the theological principle. We're really excited to see you guys at class next week.